what up what up what up this is organically natural and i wanted to come over with a real quick video y'all heard that song no weapon oh, nice me shall prosper it won't work god will do what he said he will do He's not a man. He should, I don't know, lie, heal, something. He will come through. I, that song been in my head and my head and my head and my head. And I'm like, Lord, what is it? And this is before I made my first video. And what he's telling me is that you got to trust me in the process and know that there will be weapons thrown at you. But that don't mean that they're going to happen. There will be naysayers. There will be people that's going to come on here and try to cast stones and throw stones against you. But don't allow that to happen. Because, see, a lot of y'all think that when people get on YouTube and they're vulnerable and they're sharing their lives with you, that your opinions of them don't matter. Sometimes you think that, oh, well, you're supposed to be strong, right? No, I'm flesh just like you. I'm human just like you. Imagine you get on to do your assignment that God has appointed you to do or ordained you to do. And everybody's attacking you for doing what God told you to do. I was just sitting down with my therapist yesterday. And yes, I see a therapist. And if you don't, I suggest you get one. And I was telling her, I was like, you know, sometimes I feel like the sacrifices that I make go unnoticed. Not just by humans, but sometimes by God. And we were sitting there and we were having a discussion about it because I feel like some of the things that you appointed me to do, I don't feel like I'm strong enough to do it sometimes. I feel like this isn't what I wanted to do. I didn't ask to come here. Why you put this on me? Why the wait for me? And then I realized that he don't give you anything that you can't handle. See, he ordained and created me long before I got here. And my flesh tells me I'm not strong enough. But I got to get out of my flesh and I got to get out of my thoughts and get in the word. Because whatever you feed yourself, that's what you believe, right? If I'm feeding myself the word of God, then I'm going to be able to. I need to be like that woman in the Bible to say, but if I may touch, but if I may touch, but if I may touch, but the hem of his garment, right? Then I'll be saved and I'll be healed. So if I had that mentality, see, what we fail to realize is she ain't have no Bible to hear that story. She was the story in the Bible. So there was something inside of her pushing her to say, go, go over there and touch his garment. And Jesus says, who touched me? And all his disciples like, well, everybody does. And he says, no, somebody touched me. And then she said it was me or somebody said it was her. I don't remember the whole story the right way, but I just know that Jesus said, who touched me? So if she got the wherewithal and the and everything the spirit led her to tell her, but if I may touch but the hem of his garment, we got a Bible that's given us step by step, play by play on what we're supposed to do, right? But we still allow the world, the earth to get into us, right? What's that old saying? As long as the water don't get in the ship, the ship won't sink, right? See, a lot of times, we allow negativity to penetrate us because we so afraid of this world. But do we not realize that we should, both, we should be more afraid of God? Huh? So when people tell me, oh, you should be more like this or you should, be, you should do this, I don't listen to them. You know why? Because you're trying to get me to be what you want me to be. You didn't ordain me to be here. When people tell me, oh, you're too nice. No, I'm not. I'm just who God created me to be. Magnificent. Wonderfully made in his eyes. What he said, I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath, right? Don't allow nobody to tell you who you are. What's that easy thing? My daughter watches Moana, and I love it when Moana goes and put the heart back into Tafiti. And as she's getting ready to put it in there, she touches her. And she put her chin up on her nose and she says, do you know? Do you know who you are? Because she forgot. See, sometimes this world can be so cruel that they take out your heart. They take your heart away from you. 
and they cause you to behave and act erratically and behave in ways that's not you. Because they want you to be that. They want to change you because it's easier to change you and conform you into who they are than to be who God assigned you to be. And all it takes is that one soul, that one sermon, that one aha moment, or that one devastating moment for you to find out who God is again, to find yourself again. Go to the Beyonce song, Are You Happy With Yourself? Pretty Hurts. Are you genuinely happy with yourself? See, a lot of us, we only happy when we got that crowd, when they laughing at us. We only happy when we wait till somebody turn their back and talk about them. We're only happy when we feel like we're above because we're a part of a culture that's been here. But not everything lasts forever. The only thing consistent in this world, what um, NDRE say, the only thing constant in the world, excuse me, is, I can't sing it because I had COVID, change. That's why today I take life as it comes. Right? The only thing constant in this world is change. And if we think we above change, <laughs> watch God laugh. But I just wanted to come on here and say, when we got songs and, and sermons and, and words of wisdom or old sayings and quotes come to you, God sending you a message. The universe, the spirit is sending you a message. It's guiding you. It's healing your heart and it's healing your soul. Listen to him. I know. You know how many days I'm at work? I'm like, man, I don't want to hear this message. That's how I be. I just want to listen to this ratchet music over here and keep it going. I don't know how to twerk, so I don't be twerking. But that's what I be wanting to do. Sit over there and listen to some ratchet music. Because I don't want to hear the message from God today. Because that's boring sometimes. Because I, I, I'm honest. That's how I be. And I know y'all be the same way. Because it's easier to bounce. Mm, 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 right? But sometimes we need that message in that moment. Because we're supposed to be able to ordain our day. We're supposed to be able to tell our day how it's going to be. I remember I used to get up every morning, every single morning, and I would have something good to listen to. Something positive. Les Brown, Lisa Nichol, T.D. Jakes, Joel Osteen. Now I can go down a laundry list. And out of the blue, COVID came and all that went away. Because my life changed then. All our lives changed. All of us went on to do something else, right? Because that was more important. We were surviving. We we going through something we ain't never seen before. A huge disease, a, a virus you can't see. But all I got to do is breathe in and now my life can be taken away from me from breath, from oxygen. You got people fighting that they don't want to wear a mask. I can't wear a mask because I got health problems because you selfish. We didn't know if the mask worked or not, but you dang sure didn't give it a fair try to see if it would. You think I wanted to wear a mask? I remember the first time we put on the mask was in February of 2020. Before COVID was big in the States, my daughter got a viral infection the first last week of January, the Valentine's Day week, and the first week of March. Back to back to back to back. I took her to the doctor's every time. Oh, it's just a viral infection. Oh, it's just a viral infection. Three times. So I changed doctors. Because you showed me that you didn't care about my black daughter. So I put her at another hospital, at another doctor's office. And we went up there. Let me tell you how God worked. I went to a doctor. She didn't even have time. She didn't even want to see me the third time. You know what she did? She assigned us to another doctor because she got tired of seeing us. So when I switched to another doctor's office, let me tell you something. When we got in that office, there was four doctors in that office. Four. Because they were able to take all of her experiences and hear me when I walked in there. And they didn't, they didn't abandon me because God sent me there. They didn't abandon us when we went in that office. I had four doctors in there. They all came in and they listened. They heard me. 
Because God gave them that assignment. They came in there and they took notes. They had a pen and a clipboard and a piece of paper. And they took notes. And when they were done taking notes, they walked out that room. And they went and they put and they set as a collective to create an answer. But that's the first time that I've ever in my entire existence of living had to put a mask on my face. And I felt like I was dying. My daughter and I both did. I didn't know how to breathe in that thing. I didn't know how to take a deep breath. I felt like the heat from my breath was suffocating me. The mask was touching the skin like this and this is how it sounded when I talked. And I was miserable. But I knew that in order to protect the people that we needed the help from, I needed to put that mask on. Because I knew that if this team got sick, I'm going to take this opportunity away from somebody else. It wasn't about me in that moment. It wasn't about my daughter in that moment. And she was the sick one. Turned out that she, from having three viral infections back to back to back, she was, she was in the midst of having scarlet fever. So I'm panicking. You, you having three viral infections back to back to back and nobody can tell me why. And then you're trying to convince me that it's not COVID. How? I had to learn how to wear a mask. And when I didn't like the mask they gave me, guess what I did? I got myself up. I counted my coins. And I went to Michael's. No, not Michael's. What's the name of that place we went to, Bree? Joanne's Fabric. And I looked at me a uh, sewing machine. I tried their little sewing machine. It didn't work. I sent it back. I ordered me a sewing machine online. Um, some zest, some lemon, some something. And I went down to Savannah and I picked up my sewing machine and I came back home and I brought the fabric that would allow us to breathe. I brought the filters to put in there. And I sat here and I watched a hundred YouTube videos until I learned how to sit on that sewing machine. Matter of fact, I hand sewn but 15 of them before we even went down there just to give my family something until I was able to come back here and figure out how to make the next one because there was no mask in the store. And then I came home and watched another 100 videos to learn how to sew them on the machine so I can find something that worked so that I can breathe then. And then I was able to, through that process, find masks that actually the K95 mask that came out that I can breathe because the mask wasn't flush against my face. So when I stopped, when life took away my rituals, I stopped doing God. I remember we lived in an apartment and... The lady who used to watch my daughter and her family, they end up, she used to live three blocks from my job. Perfect. I would come on over here, drop her off, drive the three blocks, blocks to work, and drive the, when I was done with my job, I would come back and pick my daughter up. We'd go on by our way. 15, 20, 30 minute drive, depending on the day of the traffic and rain. And I remember when she said she was moving back to their home where they own land and they own the house. And I was so devastated. But I couldn't do anything about it, but I needed her. And I remember every day, every day, because my daughter started head started around that time as well. So every day I would get in my car. We would leave the house at 6, between 6.15 and 6.30 every morning. Most mornings I cooked breakfast, some mornings I couldn't. So we would go to Panera Bread or McDonald's and pick up food on the way. I would go to work and get to work by 7.30, about, actually about 7.15. And I would clock in early and do my job. And then at 6, 7.35, I would leave and take her to school. And it would take me a 15-minute round trip to do that to Head Start. And then when I finished doing that, I would um pick her up at 2.15, 3.15, <coughs> 2.15. Pick her up from Head Start, take her all the way out, an hour round trip to the same lady and her family to watch my daughter. I would get back to work at about, I left work at 2.15. I would get back to work by 3.30. Every day, Monday through Friday for two years, every single day. And then when I was done, I would drive another hour back there because now I'm in rush hour traffic to drive another 50, about 45, 50 minutes back home in the next set of rush hour traffic every single day. And we wouldn't get home. I got off at 4.30 every day. 
And we walked through the door at the same time with Family Feud on. So it would be sometime between 7.15 and 7.30 at night. So it would take me three hours to get home when I got off at 4.30 every single day. But what I didn't realize is those three hours in the evening or the early afternoon or late afternoon, early evening, and that hour to work, I would listen. I was I had the gospel channel on. So I was constantly feeding myself God. And I remember I was praying to God, like, why you got me going through this? I don't want to keep doing this. And then I remember we brought this trailer when right when it was time for her to go to kindergarten. And as we're going to kindergarten, I'm talking about patterns. So hold on. I'm about to show you what I'm talking about. So I'm driving her to um, elementary school, and I thought we had another one, but I didn't realize they built a new one. So we finally get her registered in the school on the first day of school, get every, well, first two or three days, because they made the process impossible. So we finally get all of this stuff done, right? And probably about a month, two months in, I just kept saying, God, something missing. This ain't right. I feel like a robot, and I don't like this feeling. And I just remember saying, and I never felt that going to the daycare. I never felt that in the hour that I was spending on my lunch break. I never felt that on the three-hour trip from work to pick her up and go home. I never felt that. And it, it, I kept saying that to God every day, every day, every day, every day. The Lord just don't feel right. I just feel like I'm this robot. And I couldn't figure out why it was bothering me. And we only had, it literally took, in the morning time to get her to school, she had to be to school by 7.15 is when the first bell rang. 7.20 is the late bell. We would leave here between 6.50 and 7 o'clock. And we would still get her not only parked at the school through the carpool line, but walking up to the building in that time. Now, it would take me another 15 to 20 minutes to get to work, probably an hour or some more, depending on if there was a wreck on the highway. And then that still didn't bother me because by the she had to be to work by... I mean, I... I don't know. I still got to work. It only took me 10 minutes. So, because I was still able to get to work. If I got her to work or school by 7.15, I was still getting to work by 7.25, 7.30. I was always the first person there. And then, um, coming back home, I, it would take me longer to get her because we had the car, like the line, the traffic to turn left at that traffic light was long. So, but even still, with all of the times combined of getting her to school, getting to work, and getting from work back to her school and getting back home, was all still less than an hour. And I just, I kept trying to figure out why I feel so confined, like I feel like this hour was way longer. And you know what I ended up realizing? I, I didn't have time to concentrate on God. That hour that I spent um, from 2.15 until 3.30, I was listening to gospel. That three hours that we were in the car, we would listen to the gospel channel or T.D. Jakes or Joel Osteen. And so it didn't seem mundane and like a task because I was in the spirit of God and I was feeding myself what God needed me to feed myself. I really didn't think this message was going to be this long, but God has a way of putting stuff in my heart, my spirit. And I just remember saying, Lord, I prayed you out of my life. Because that's what happened. I'm praying about the trip, and God says, but if I take the trip away from you, then I you get less time of me. Because I wasn't doing the studies when I got home because I was so interested in the Oh, I don't have to do all of this, so now I got time to do me, right? Watching Ratchet TV, Real Housewives of Atlanta, Married to Medicine. Um, what else was my go-to? Still my go-to's. Um, I don't know. That's what I used to be on. That that right there. And so God was getting further and further from my life, and even though I still kept him in my ear while I was at work. But those private times when I had that. 30 minute ride back home back to work without her in my car when I had that 45 minutes to an hour to go pick her up that was my private time with God that was my easy ride with God even though it took that long it was still an easy ride and I, I missed it I missed the message because of the mess right hmm? 
So what I'm saying to you, and I don't even know where I was going with this video. I, I believe I started this video with the song, No West Point, Formed Against Me Shall Prosper. And so what we got to realize in life is that it's not going to be what we want it to be. It's not going to work how we want it to work. And when we're praying things out of our lives, sometimes we're praying God out of our lives. So sometimes we got to go with the flow and the transition, even when it don't seem right and it don't feel right. Trust, I know. <laughs> I've been on a 10-year battle fighting a man that said, I promise to love you through thick and thin, through sickness and health, till death do us part. That was a lie. No harm, no foul against him. I ain't even mad about it. Because I'm happier now than I ever was there. Without him, I wouldn't have my daughter. I wouldn't have my beautiful daughter sitting right here. I wouldn't have my purpose, my drive, my mission, my goal of sitting here talking to y'all right now. None of this would even exist if she didn't exist. So I don't hate him. I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. I'm not. What for? They ain't gonna get me nowhere. But I just came on to say, sometimes we marry into that weapon. That's, yeah, that weapon. Sometimes we're born into. Sometimes we go to work too. Sometimes we birth that weapon. <laughs> as much as we hate to say it, sometimes we buy our own weapon. That weapon, um, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That weapon. I ain't talking about no G-U-N. I ain't talking about those things, the earthly weapons. I'm talking about the spiritual weapon, the warfare <clears throat> that we have to fight every day. Not many people told me, oh, you change. Oh, you think you better than no. I went through hell <coughs> before I came back home. I left here in 2009. And, why, and I came back in 2015. So while I was only gone for six years physically, spiritually, and emotionally, I went through hell. I, was, it, I had grown 20 years. If you experienced half of what I experienced in that six years of being gone, you would understand why I was the way I was when I came back. I remember in 2020, my daughter and I, we made a trip in early September I mean, late August, early September to Michigan. And I needed that trip. Honestly, that trip saved my life. And I, I know for a fact, my friend was like, man, what's wrong with my friend? Because either you call me Smiley or you call me Sunshine. Because I carry light. I believe in light. I believe in happiness. I believe in we don't have to be bogged down even when we bog down. I believe in music and spirit. I used to have so many people tell me, oh, you listen to all this slow music. You listen to all of this. And I was sitting in the car the other day saying, I allowed other people to change who I am because they didn't like my music in my car. I wish I would today. You don't like it? Get out and walk. Drive your own car. I'll meet you there. But I know my friend in Michigan was like, man, what's wrong with Smiley? Because I wasn't Smiley. I was so quiet. Because I was beaten and battered and bruised and it was like being there was that breath of fresh air it was my lifeline that God knew that I needed it was the place that he put me back to heal me I remember when I was pregnant with my no my daughter was over almost a year and my best friend had came down for that Mother's Day weekend when we lived in Massachusetts Rhode Island Massachusetts we lived in, but she went to the Navy base over in Rhode Island. God has a way of sending people and using them as your lifeline when you at your lowest of your lows. I remember I said, look, I got a job interview, not my friend to my husband. I need you to watch our daughter for an hour. The interview was at 2.15. He showed up at 2.15. Despite everything that I tried to do to make sure that we had a household where both parents were contributing to the household. I had a job that I was able to take my daughter with me and nanny somebody else's child with my child being there. It wasn't like she was going to be cared for it by anybody else. All I needed you to do was show up. Just show up. And he couldn't do that. 
So guess what I said, okay? Oh, I don't know what to do. But within two days of that happening, my friend called me and says, hey, I'm being stationed in this area. I want to see you, and I want to meet the baby. Because at this point, she hasn't met. Nobody had met my baby at that point. So I was like, okay, guys, I was so excited, so stoked. We drove <laughs> that hour and 45 minutes. I think she was there for seven days. We drove five out of those seven days to go see her. That's the first time that I ever listened to T.D. Jakes, ever. I was told, oh, T.D. Jakes this, T.D. Jakes that. It was, a, it was a message about women and how we birth everything and we bring it to our bosoms to feed it. Because that's what we do. We feed our children in our bosom. And he was talking, it was called Woman Thou Art Loose. I'll never forget that message. And he was at a Woman Thou Art Loose, but I believe that was the title of the message too. And I listened to that message probably about 15 times. Because God was talking to me as I was driving down that road. He was changing my heart and my spirit as I was driving down that road. And I remember in the midst of my friend being there for that school, he said to me, well, the one thing he can't take away from you is your education. Go get your degree. My friend left on a, probably a Sunday. I was enrolled in school by that Wednesday. Because even though I didn't have a job, I still had a purpose. My friend restored back what I needed because I was dying. I was dying on the inside. And I still feel like I'm healing from the inside out. So you going to marry those weapons and birth those, I'm not talking about my daughter, but some of us birth our weapons. Some of us friend, befriend our weapons. Some of us get hired on at our weapons. Some of us are related to or birthed into our weapons. But how do you get yourself out of that? How do you pull yourself when you feel like you ain't got no more strength to do it? I just, it's tough. I know. Ten years I've been doing it. Ten. Ten. I made a video about three weeks ago. And it probably was one of the toughest videos I've made. I still haven't gone back and looked at that video. And one day I will. And when I do decide to post it, I'll let you guys know. But I just want to say that you hold the home. Hold on. God got you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Not at all. The battle's not yours. It's, it's the Lord. Yep, that's it, y'all. I ain't got nothing else to say. I don't even know if I went on the right message. I don't know. But I know that that was sent to me, and it came to my heart, and I had to share it. But I'm about to get off of here. I'm about to go see what my daughter wants to eat. I know it's late. And I'm about to relax before I got to get up and go to work for one more day before the Christmas holidays. But I wish you all well. And I hope that you guys have an amazing Friday and a great holiday if you don't see me until after. But peace, love, and blessings. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.